lesson is on graphing linear inequalities. So before we start, let's go ahead and bring back some ideas that we know regarding inequalities from last chapter. So last chapter we were solving an inequality that looked like this. Notice that there is one variable. And we had to figure out what numbers could go in for x that would make this side here greater, because the inequality is going to this side, greater than or equal to 11. So if you recall, when we solve an inequality, we're going to solve it just like an equation. However, if we end up dividing by a negative to both sides, which we are in this problem, since we're dividing by a negative, we have to switch the direction of the inequality symbol. Okay. Then we also can show our solutions graphically. So this is saying x can be any number less than, so that means the left side here, any number less than negative 3 is on the left of a number line, less than negative 3 or equal. So we're going to use a bracket because it could equal. Just like when you look at a, a bracket, remember that it has like an equal sign right here. If you look at it as an equal sign, it means it could equal negative 3, as well as any number less. So then we're going to shade this side here. So that means any number less than negative 3, including negative 3, can go back in for x and make this side greater than this side. Okay, so if we take a look at the problems that we are working with in this chapter, notice we're giving a, an inequality and it says determine which, whether the each ordered pair is a solution to the inequality. So now we have ordered pairs because our equation, 2x minus 3y is greater than 6, there are two variables. That's why we have two numbers and we write it as an ordered pair. So it's just asking us, could x be negative 3 and y be negative 4? So we're going to plug those numbers in for x and for y. And remember, it's alphabetical order. That's how I know the negative 3 is x and the second number is y. And 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And negative 6 plus 12 is 6. So this is saying, is 6 greater than 6? No. So in other words, this point right here is not a solution to this inequality. Let's go ahead and check the next problem. So same line, same equation. This time we want to know, could x be 3 and y be negative 1? Two times three is six. Negative three times negative one is positive three. Six plus three is nine. So this sa is saying is nine greater than six? Yes. So remember from last chapter that if the number, if you can plug in a number and it makes this true, it's in the shaded region. So in other words, you know in this chapter we are graphing lines. So when we graph this line right here, it is saying that this point is in the shade. When we're going to shade, just like we shade on a number line, it's, it's going to look a little different on a, on a coordinate plane, but that means that this point is going to be in the shaded region when we learn how to shade in a moment here. Okay. So just like when we graph here, we need to know whether to put a parenthesis or a bracket. Well, same thing on a coordinate plane. So instead of putting a bracket or parenthesis, you're going to use a solid line when you graph. In other words, when you connect the point, you are going to graph it normally. If it has the line underneath, if it is a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to symbol. You're going to use a dashed line if it doesn't equal. So in other words, when you connect the point, it's going to look like this. It's going to be dashed when you connect the point. 
And the difference between these two is if it's a dashed line, it means that the points on the line can't be solutions for x and y. If it's a solid line, it means that the points, that the points on the line are solutions, can be plugged in for x and y. And remember, when you graph, you want to make sure your equation is in slope intercept form. That means you want the y by itself, y equals mx plus b. And remember, when you divide by a negative with inequality, when you divide by a negative, you need to switch the direction of the symbol. And after graphing, you're going to need a shade the side of the graph where the solutions are located. So before we start here, let's practice shading. So on page 21 of your notes packet, you have graphs that are already graphed, because we should already know how to graph by now. Right now we are just going to practice what side of the graph to shade. Just like when we graph on a number line, we have to know what side to shade. Same thing here. So notice a graph cuts the graph, or the line cuts the graph into two sides. We have a left and we have a right side. Just like we do here. There's a left and a right side. So when you shade, what you're going to do is you're going to read the problem. And this says y is greater. And it says y is greater. So you're going to go to the y-axis. So remember here, last chapter, when it was greater, we shaded this side. Well, that's the x. This is now saying x is less than or equal. This one's saying y is greater. So now we're going to look at the y-axis. And since it says y is greater, the y values are greater over here. 10 is bigger than negative 10. So that means I'm going to shade this side over here where the 10 is, up here. So we're going to shade here on this side of the graph. Okay, if we would take a look at example 2, this says y is less than. So here's the y-axis, and you need to ask yourself, are the numbers up here less, or are the numbers over here less? And hopefully you're thinking the numbers down here are less. The numbers down here. So we're going to shade down here. Okay. Example 3. We're going to read this. Notice it has the line underneath. That's why it is a solid line here. This one here didn't have the line underneath, so it was a dashed line. So we're going to read this. This says y is greater than or equal. So here's the y-axis. And ask yourself, where are the y values greater, up here or down here? So hopefully you're thinking, up there. So this is the side that we shade. And again, remember the shading is where all the solutions are located. Okay, so we're going to read this. Notice it is a solid line. It has the line underneath. This says y is greater. And because this is the y-axis, you ask yourself, are the numbers greater up here or down here? And hopefully you're thinking up here. So we're going to shade up here. Okay, if we look here, this says y is less than or equal to. So less than, so here's the y-axis, and you ask yourself, where are the y values less than, up here or down here? And hopefully you're thinking down here. Okay, example six, read this, it says y is less than, so the y values are less than up here or down here? Hopefully you're thinking down here. So we're going to stay down here on this side. Now if we take a look at the next one, this would be example 7 here, 
This time there's no Y, there's just an X. Notice it's a vertical line. Notice it's dotted or it's dashed because it doesn't have the line underneath. This time we have to go to the X axis, which is this one right here. And we're going to read this. This says X is less than. So now you're not looking up here and down here. You're looking at the X axis. And where are the numbers less than? On the left or on the right? And hopefully you're thinking on the left. So we're going to shade on this side, the left side. Okay, now we're back at Y. And this says Y is greater or equal than or equal to. So the numbers are greater up here. So we're going to shade above the line. Okay, and last one. We're at the y-axis again, and it says y is less than. So the numbers on the y-axis are less than down here. So we're going to shade below the line. All right, now let's do an example from start to end. So let's take a look at this next example right here. So we have y minus 2x is less than or equal to negative 3. So before we can actually graph it, we have to get the y by itself. So we want y by itself. So to get y by itself, we have to get rid of this negative 2x. So we're going to add 2x to both sides. And adding does not flip the sign, so we're going to keep it the same. And I like to put the variable, the one with the x, first. So I'm going to put 2x first and then negative 3 afterwards. So now I have the y by itself. So when you have y by itself, the number in front of x is m. It's the slope. So the rise over the run, the slope, is 2. And remember, we can always divide anything by 1. So my slope is I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 1. I'm going up because it's positive. I'm going to the right because the numbers on the right are positive. And then this number here tells me where it crosses the y-axis. So I'm going to start at negative 3. So I'm going to go to the y-axis. I'm going to go to negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And my slope is 2. So I'm going to go from this point. I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 1. Up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1. And if I want more dots down here, I can go down 2, left 1. Down 2, left 1. Now, when we connect our point, because it has the line underneath, we're going to use a solid line. Because of this, we use a solid line. Okay, now we have to shade. So we go not to the start. You have to go where the y is by itself and read that. This says y is less than or equal. So less than, the numbers on the y-axis are less down here. So we are going to shade down here. That would be this side. Okay, so I want you to remember that the shading represents where all the solutions are. So we want to know if the point negative 2, 3, if it is a solution. So we started off this lesson by plugging the numbers into the problem. Well, since we have a graph, it would be much faster to look at our graph. So we want to see if we go to the point negative 2, 3, is that in the shaded region? No. So that means that x can't be negative 2 and y can't be 3. So no. Okay, now let's check the point 2, 1. So if we go over to 2 and up 1, it's not in the shaded region, it's on the line. And because it's on the line and the line is solid, 2, 1 is a solution. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. So we have 2x minus 3y is greater than 6. 
So first thing, we want to get the y by itself. So to get rid of the 2x, we're going to take 2x away. I like to put the x term first, and then the positive 6 second. And then the very last step, once the y term is isolated, we divide. And we're dividing everything by a negative 3. So when we divide here by a negative, we need to switch the sign. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 3 can't go into 2, so we leave it as 2 thirds. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. 3 goes into 6 twice. So now we have the y by itself, so now we can graph it. So to graph, we are going to start on the y at negative 2. So we're going to go to the y-axis and go to negative 2. Then the slope, the rise over the run, the slope is 2 thirds. That means because it's positive, we're going to go up, and then we're going to go to the right because this number is positive, and the numbers on the right are positive, and the numbers up are positive. So from that starting point here, we're going to go up to right 3, up to right 3, up to right 3. And that's the same thing as going the opposite, down to left 3, down to left 3, and so on. Now when we connect our points, because it doesn't have the line underneath, we're going to use a dashed line. So when we connect our points, we're not going to use a solid line, we use a dashed line. Okay, then to shade, we have to read this. This says y is less than. So because y is less, we're going to shade where the y values are less, down here. So we're going to shade below the line. Okay? Then let's see if we understand what the shading means. So we're asked, is 10, 2 a solution? So if we go over to 10 and then up 2, is that a solution? And hopefully you're thinking, of course, it's in the shaded region, so yes. Okay, then we're asked, how about 3, 0? So 1, 2, 3, 0. It's right on the line. But this time, it's on the line, but it's a dashed line. The dashed means no. Those points cannot be x and y. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at one where there is no y. There's just an x. So to graph when there's only an x, again, notice there's no x and y, like this one had an x and a y, and this one has an x and a y. This one only has an x, so that means you're going to go to the x-axis. You're going to go to negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And remember, we talked in um, our prior lessons that an x, the top looks like a v, so it's going to make a vertical line. Whoops. And not only is it going to be a vertical line, but we have to look at this. And the line isn't underneath, so it's going to be dashed. So we're going to have a dashed line. And then we read this. This says y x is greater. So we're going to look at the x-axis, and where are the numbers greater on the x-axis? Right here, on the right. So we shade to the right. Okay, one last example. Let's take a look here. This time it only has a y. So we're going to go to the y-axis. We're going to go to positive 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And remember we talked that the letter y, upside down, kind of looks like an h, but horizontal. So this is going to make a horizontal line, and it's going to be solid because it has the line underneath. It's going to be a solid line. Then we read this, and this says y is less than or equal. So the numbers are less on the y-axis down here. So we're going to shade below. 